Okay, this how-to video is going to go through a few of the features that are available inside the Cadence PCB tools to help you with uh, timing, so controlling things like your relative propagation delays, your differential pairs, um, resolving things like static and dynamic phase. Um, so predominantly when you get this type of scenario, and you can see here I've got um, a couple of match groups that have been routed, but they haven't been delay tuned, so I can potentially have a few DRCs here, and I've got to go and sort the delays out, make the length, is, length all the same. Um, if I look at the design based on the, the, the etch color, or that specific layer color, um, I'm getting no indication of what this looks like, so I would probably have to open Constraint Manager, and have that open, and, and then maybe start touching nets to get the heads-up display, just to get an indication of what's meeting the constraint and what's not, where would I need to start. If I've got a, a target in multiple match groups, um, you know, if I adjust it in one match group and it's all fine, then I go to the next match group and I start to adjust their values, I end up pushing the other one back out of phase again or make, making it incorrect because it's too short or too long because the other items aren't matching me so it's quite a complex process trying to get so a, you know, a ddr memory you know ddr3 4 and 5 trying to get that kind of delayed and sorted out so um, these tools here should should hope make that process a lot easier um, so we're going to start off with something called timing vision and what timing vision does is timing vision physically colors the sea lines on the canvas based on the the constraints uh, the constraint values that they are, or their timing constraints. So if you look under the root menu, there's something called timing vision. So in the options pane, this little fold out pane on the right hand side, um, we can actually take this off to a second monitor or dock it anywhere else we'd like to. I've got different options here. So I've got one that satisfies the timing, one that's shorter than the required value. Um, I've also got a small amount shorter. So the reason for the two, this is effectively less than 5% shorter. This is more than five percent shorter basically so you two options for these um, so you can obviously just right click here and choose a color and set a different color and the same with the longer obviously this is um, longer than required value and this is a small amount longer so this will be less than five amount five percent longer and this will be more than five percent longer again set a different color with a little right click to choose the color the pattern for critical signals obviously you can just choose a different pattern and this will be shown for things like your target um, values in, in each match group. I've got some different modes, so I've got DRC timing and DRC phase. These are based on the constraint manager values for, for phase rules, so static and dynamic phase rules. And the DRC timing would give me the values for um, your relative propagation delays um, values in there. So there's a smart timing and a smart phase, and this is where the system starts to use some intelligence, and it starts to look at all the match groups, all, all the members of the timing group, um, and then decides, you know, it's looking at the values. So if you've got a a, a track or, or a net that's specifically a, a target value, and it's in multiple match groups, it looks which match groups are in, what the length, what the rooted members are in those match groups, um, and then it would then start to change the color. So it might well want you to add length to the target value, um, because your longest rooted member is already rooted. That's kind of fixed. That's that can't get any shorter. So you would have to bring up the length of your target value to meet that, that constraint. And, and time, smart timing and smart phase will show you that physically on the screen so you don't have to worry about calculating it. And that can stop you chasing your tail a little bit. There's a, a min length percent for smart goals. Um, and what this does is allows you to kind of um, define how you want the system to handle the delay distribution um, if you've got multiple rats. So in this scenario here, I've got like an FPGA I've got two uh, dim connectors, and I don't really want the, the space between the two dim connectors to be adjusted. So any delay I want added surely is just in this kind of this area here, the longer longer rooted area. Um, so you can physically control whether this, this adds the delay or not using that kind of value. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll start off with uh, making a timing group, and the timing group can either be done with the match group selection mode, the XNet selection mode, so if I enable this, for example, and pick a single member, it's going to highlight or change the color of just that match group. So let's just clear the selection. And I can do that with match group selection mode or XNet selection mode, or I can literally just draw a box to cover everything that I'm interested in. So I'm just going to worry about this lot for, for, to start off with. So um, in DRC timing, this is just showing me the, the timing routes based on Constraint Manager. Now, normally we would look at phase first when you're trying to sort out constraints like this. So we'll start off with um, smart phase because I think smart phase is the way to go. So what will happen now is only the differential pairs will be shown. So you can see it's, it's unselected everything apart from the differential pairs. 
and it's shown me some that are too long and some that are too short. So what we want to do is we want to start maybe looking at changing these, adding some length, adding some bumps. Um, we can look at either changing the angle of this. We can do this manually by just using the root phase, phase tune command. We can manually just try to adjust the routing on this. Um, or we can use the tool to do this for this. So there's actually something called the root auto interactive phase tune command. This allows us to either um, shorten the pad entry. So it might you know, effectively change a diagonal line across here. Um, it might lengthen the pad entry just to try and um, add some length to, to one of the members. So if the member's too short, it might try and add some length. Maybe it comes around here or something like this. Uh, and we can allow off angle segments and the gather and, and allow the gather move. So this is obviously the gather point here. Can we allow the gather point to move to kind of give us some extra length and sort some of these options out? Um, we also have something to add uncoupled bumps, um, which I'll cover in a little bit minute. Um, and then the compensation location. So obviously I've got a in this scenario here, I've got one of the classes a high pin component and I've got a low pin component or I've got any. So you can choose where this is allowed to happen. So I probably don't want inside the BGA to be affected. So I'm just going to say the low pin component and I can zoom in here and then just window select the two C lines. Um, nothing happens. So I, I'm not doing enough with these options here. So what I maybe need to do is uh, add some uncoupled bumps. So I'll enable the add couple bumps. The more options will allow you to go and set um, what size you want for the uncoupled bumps or you can do it from the setup design parameters and then go to the routing tab and you can choose the auto interactive phase tune and get all the options here. I then window select the two track and they go green so you can see effectively it's changed the route in this routing used to kind of come in across here and down so it's added a little bit of length here and then it's added a little phase bump here um, and that's it. That's kind of that's done the, the the first differential pair. It's gone green, so I know I'm meeting the constraints, so I can then move on. And it's just a case of literally going through each differential pair and window selecting the two differential pairs, the short and the long member, and watching it go green. So you're not having to think about this too much. You're just seeing it go green. Um, obviously, you're adding phase bumps. Now, adding phase bumps does mean potentially that I could be breaking or making these become making this differential pair uncoupled. So you have to make the decision about what's more important, the length matching between the two different halves of the differential pair or whether they're completely coupled. And you're the only ones that can decide that kind of question. So, so once we've done our phase, um, what we need to then do is start looking at the, the timing. So if we go to the root timing vision again, this time we'll change from smart phase, we will go to smart timing. So we'll go to smart timing and you'll see a lot of these will effectively go red or gray because we're trying to look at here for shorter. We want items that are shorter because we want to be able to add length to these. And if we look in and we've got this target pattern for the critical signal so we can see where our target values are. And we have actually got one here that's, that's stayed of the same color. This just means that it's not been added effectively as part of the, the match group. So in some scenarios with a differential pair, users may only put one half of the differential pair in the match group because something like phase or the phase tolerance will match the two halves together so you don't necessarily need to put both halves in a in a match group so now we're here we'll then go to root auto interactive delay tuning and again you've got different options here for accordion trombone the settings that you need where you allow them what you want to do and once we're happy with those we can literally just start to window so i'm drawing a window around the next that I want to do and it's added the delay and, and this can be a big group or it can be a small group so you could if you wanted to let's just go and select the more you select obviously the longer time it's going to take um, so let's just go and select a, a group maybe that much and when it completes you can see that it's obviously most of these have gone green as a target value here so we know we're kind of meeting what's going on so we'll just go and pick the next section And again, we've kind of done most of these. If there's anything you're not happy, happy with, there is actually a root remove tuning command. So we could maybe go in and just remove the tuning on here. here. Um, maybe let's go and remove the tuning on these two. And then let's run it again. And let's see if we can get these to do something slightly different. And that works slightly better so you have the different control about what you want to do to get your match group to color the general idea is you want everything to go green and once everything's gone green you know you're meeting your constraints and you're good to carry on